later. All right, we appreciate everybody's patience. We're, uh, we're ready to get started. So uh, my name is Greg Hetrick. Um, for, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm uh, kind of the, the lead organizer for B-Sides Iowa. Uh, last year, we formed a 501c3, um, and myself and John Pudwell and Chad Smith, we were running around here, uh, you know, formed the board, and we kind of helped run it. And then I've got a bunch of other organizers that helped out this year, and I'll, uh, I'll point those out in a minute. So first off, uh, welcome. For those who were here last year, you know we ran out of coffee in like 13 seconds. Uh, it was it was quick. Like I ordered, and they're like, "How about six gallons of coffee?" I'm like, "That's a ton of coffee." I'm thinking like a big like got cooler full of coffee. It was gone like that. So this year they're gonna, they're going to come keep checking it for us. Uh, uh, the other question I got a lot of is why did we charge this year? So last year we had 170 register, 177 register. We had 112 show up, um, and you know we ordered T-shirts. And this year we want to do electronic badges. And so all that kind of costs a little bit of money, so we decided this year what we'll do is we'll just charge a little bit uh, for, for those who can, can do it. Uh, students were still free, uh, and then we had a kind of a free will donation thing. Um, so that's why we did it this year, kind of give a little skin game, help, you know, help support some of the costs that we had. So hopefully, uh, hopefully nobody was offended. We actually did have 228 register, um, and we've had several pay at the door, so it, it, our numbers went up. Uh, I don't suspect we'll change that next year at all. I think it worked out pretty well. A little bit about our history. So... Uh, I've talked about this last year, so Ken Johnson ran B-Sides for several years, uh, and then uh, a group of us took it over in 2017, so this is kind of what our numbers have, have looked like. Um, <clears throat> I want to point out this year, so last year we had just enough talks to fill our schedule. This year we had 30. Uh, it was amazing. We had some really, really good talks. There was a group of about seven of us who went through the CFPs, uh, and just so everybody knows how we did it. We stripped out all the names, all the bio information, uh, just looked at talk titles and abstracts, and then we just voted on them. Uh, and the ones that are presented today, there's 18 of them, uh, were the ones that we all voted, you know, in the, the, the top 18. So there's some fantastic talks. There were some really, really good talks that we had to turn down, uh, and we feel really bad about that. Uh, next year, depending upon attendance, we may open up a third track, uh, but I think we might try and keep it uh, about this size, uh, just so that we can uh, keep, keep everything rolling. So one of the things that, that was asked is, you know, we're a 501c3 and we do a lot with donations and sponsor money was was can we just kind of give some financial transparency and i was like sure no problem so at the end of last year uh we finished with about three thousand dollars in the bank um this year is the next line there so we had uh, about three thousand dollars in in-kind donations so we got stuff from hack five we got stuff from no starch press um, we have an attorney that works with us that kind of helps the the corporate side of things when we need help uh, and those were all you know in-kind donations that we accepted uh, we got about nine thousand dollars in cash uh, from our sponsors, uh, who uh, Pradams outside. Uh, they're the only sponsor that that, that had a booth this year, um, so make sure you stop out and talk to those guys. Um, and then we had about twenty six hundred dollars in the donations, ticket sales. If you when you sign up for a ticket, uh, if you weren't a student, it was fifteen dollars for a regular ticket, or we had another ticket that was just like a free will donation over twenty dollars. Um, and so we ended up about twenty six hundred dollars that way, which which was awesome. And then our expenses so far for this year: t-shirts cost us just over two thousand dollars. Uh, badges were twenty-four hundred dollars. They were what about eight and a half bucks a badge, yeah. something like that. Uh, assembled and everything. Um, and oh, I forgot to add batteries. Batteries were like sixty bucks. We had to buy three hundred batteries. Uh, the venue charged us eight hundred ninety-five dollars, which is really nice. Uh, the signage that we have put up was three ten. Uh, we ordered more stickers. Uh, we had a speaker dinner last night. Uh, the meals are provided. So just a quick note on that. Everybody should have got a. A lunch voucher. If you did not get a lunch voucher, don't worry, we still got your lunch for you. Just check with the registration desk and just let them know you didn't get one. And when you go through the line, just tell them you don't have one and we'll give them a count at the end and everybody will be good. Uh, after party, so there is an after party. I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, so we'll, we'll spend some money there. Uh, and then we just got some miscellaneous other expenses. As of last night, we have about $3,200 in the bank. Uh, so we should be in pretty good shape uh, to get something rolling for next year. So badges. Uh, this is Greg Rice. Greg was one of our uh, organizers. He's the one that designed the badges, and he did an awesome job. So he's just going to give you a little, little walkthrough of those. Thanks. Uh, so uh, you, you might ask, uh, uh, what do we uh, want to do when we design the badges? Well, the, the big thought here was let's make something educational. Uh, many of the larger cons uh, have a, a hackable badge every year with some sort of embedded uh, microcontroller on it. Uh, generally, it's got uh, LEDs, maybe a few peripherals, maybe there's even uh, things like CTF contests as a part of it. But we wanted something that was educational where people could uh, learn to code. Uh, they could potentially, uh, uh, there's a little header on here, you could start soldering on peripherals, so it's a potential to learn to solder. And I'll show in a moment here, uh, all of the schematics are available online. So this is a potential, uh, if you're new to digital electronics, there's potential here to kind of explore that as well. It's also customizable. So there's a, a default set of code uh, on your badge right now. 
you are welcome uh, to open up uh, um, a, uh, a code editor today. I have programmers in the back uh, that you can use. You're welcome to program your own uh, uh, LED pattern. That's probably the simplest thing you can do to the badges uh, to make it your own. The final uh, criteria that I kind of set out for was, well, this is going to be uh, a little risky for us, right? I mean, we're going to have uh, uh, these badges made. It's a, it's a big investment for us. As Greg just showed the finances, it was the uh, uh, most expensive item on the list. So we want to try to make this low cost, low risk a, a, as possible as well. So what did we end up with? Well, uh, your badge has an AT Tiny uh, uh, 85 or an ABR microcontroller. ABR is the instruction set architecture. You're probably more familiar with the, the more popular term, Arduino. Uh, the AT Tiny 5 is, a, uh, is one of the most simplistic Arduinos. Uh, you can see right here, it's got an 8-bit uh, processor, about 8 kilobytes of in-memory flash. Right now, uh, the code maybe uses about a K of that. So there's plenty of uh, options to, to add more. 512 bytes of uh, SRAM. Uh, and it's got lots and lots of building peripherals, like temperature sensor, A to D controller, uh, spy bus, and, and so on. It's uh, 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 very low power. Uh, your chips run in sleep mode today. It draws maybe uh, uh, on the order of like tens of microamps, and it runs off a three volt battery. Uh, if you leave this badge running, uh, it should last a little over a week uh, on its, uh, its present watch battery. It also, as I noted, has a, uh, a programmable header. You can pick up uh, an AVR programmer for like 15, 20 bucks. You can build your own. Uh, so it's, it's fully programmable as well. Design and manufacture, you can find, if you looked on the back of your badge, there's a, a GitHub address. Everything's been open source. So the schematics, the PCB layout, uh, the code, all available online. Uh, you can take a look at that and, uh, and start to muck with it. Uh, there's a, a, a readme file there that I think is helpful. Um, Hardware, if you wanted to uh, uh, play with the circuits in the future, um, uh, Eagle tends to be the, uh, the most popular package on Windows. You can download that. Autodesk owns it today. Um, uh, you can download it for free. KiCad is the open source version. It's also very easy to use. You can use that on Linux, Windows. I don't know if it runs on Mac. Uh, uh, software, Arduino IDE is probably uh, uh, what I would suggest if you're using Windows. Linux, use your favorite editor. GCC AVR is your friend to compile this code. ABR dude is uh, uh, what you would use to actually uh, program the badge. We actually have all of this uh, manufactured by Seed Fusion PCB. Uh, Seed is a, a, a great, uh, uh, if you're familiar with like SparkFine or uh, 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 Adafruit, right? Seed is a, a, a similar uh, um, uh, outfit. They, a few years ago, uh, set up a, a Chinese uh, computer-aided manufacturing team. Uh, today, they specialize in small maker projects, easy, uh, uh, easy runs. Uh, we had a great team there working through uh, uh, actual manufacturing of the badge because I wasn't about to solder 200 badges. Uh, words of caution with the badge. Um, uh, it's surface-mounted parts, so I wouldn't, like, peel at the battery or pick at the chips. I mean, it, it eventually, right, these, uh, uh, these should, be, should be fine and resilient to last, but if you're prying at the battery, you'll eventually pry the parts. Adapt. If you if you just leave it alone, it should just be fine. If for some reason you look at your badge today and it's not working, just hit the reset button. Uh, that should uh, um, um, uh, uh, reset it. In the event that it's still not working, uh, do what most computer people do: pull the battery and uh, and reboot it. Um, <laughs> if it's still not working, bring it to me. I I, I will. Uh, I have some uh, uh, material on the back today. We can uh, we can debug it together. Badge customization, uh, you can, again, download and review the code. Uh, GitHub address is on the back. Um, the microcontroller, uh, the, the code's a little complicated just because I was, uh, we set it up to, uh, to, to reduce power. It's pretty easy to read. Uh, the microcontroller does go to sleep, though, to, uh, to reduce power. If you wanted to, if you start looking at uh, uh, um, uh, Arduino resources, the easiest thing to do here is to start banging out LEDs right within your uh, uh, main loop. Uh, so you could eliminate the sleep and whatnot, and uh, it'll, it'll increase power, but it'll still last a day. Uh, the 12 LEDs are uh, all run over three I.O. ports uh, using a technique called Charlie Plexing. You can look it up on Wikipedia. There's a nice uh, description of how that works with uh, uh, pulse width modulation. Um, it's, uh, the, the code, though, is relatively easy to read. You can, uh, you can uh, pretty easily uh, modify the code to do new LED light patterns. Uh, you could also have different push button actions, like if you hold down reset, maybe something uh, fancy happens. 
Again, there's ADR programmers in the back that uh, you can temporarily uh, uh, use to uh, uh, push, push new code to your badge. If you have problems, uh, that I, I'm set up in the back today. I have a few soldering irons as well if you'd like to uh, uh, solder a header onto your board for future use. The other uh, uh, thing I'll note here is that you don't have to solder uh, a header onto your board. Um, I have uh, uh, headless uh, uh, pogo programmers as well, so you don't technically need the pins. Any questions about the badge? Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for all your work, too. Oh, thanks. All right, we're going to have uh, Brandon Burke from Second SM come up and talk about the CTF, which will start doing shortly. All right, so last year we did a CTF. Uh, we were asked to come back and do it again this year. We had a great time doing it last year, so we definitely wanted to help out. Um, so bsidesiowa.secdsm.org is the URL that you want to go to to get signed up. Uh, our room is located in the back. It's a pretty chill room. We got music playing, come hang out, learn some things. Um, and if you've never played a CTF, uh, this is a great one to do it. We've actually had uh, Zach bring some additional computers. So even if you didn't bring a computer but you still kind of want to get some experience, find Zach. Zach's in the back there. Um, thank you, Zach. Uh, find him and, uh, and he can help you get started. Um, for attending today, just to kind of give you guys a flag, there's a flag. Uh, that is what you will need to submit uh, to the scoreboard to score points. So um, the people that didn't show up to opening ceremony that are still playing the CTF or think they're playing the CTF, uh, they won't get that flag. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> thanks, Matt White, for the idea. So um, we, this year we had a lot of people help out with the challenges. I think the count is 59 challenges, which is a lot. We had uh, seven people involved with bringing up uh, seven SECDSM members with either submitting challenges, managing the infrastructure, and just kind of getting going. Um, so I'll talk a lot more about that in closing ceremonies, about who those people were, what they did, and all that. Um, uh, but yeah, come, come check it out. It should be a really fun time. Thanks. So, so when I mentioned the in-kind uh, donations, SECDSM is actually a sponsor of Besides Iowa because of all the work they do on our on the CTF, which is just fantastic, and I keep hearing about how much time they've been putting in, so it's great. Uh, special thanks, these uh, organizers really helped out. John helped out with t-shirts, Greg, of course, did the badges, Antoinette did the uh, volunteers and just helped out around, and Brandon helped us find the venue and the uh, after party vendor, so thanks for, for the, those guys, and there was more that helped, um, but, uh, uh, and then again, special thanks to our sponsors, uh, as I showed you in the financial piece, uh, without them, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't put this on, so we really appreciate them. So you know, uh, keep that in mind, and uh, you know, talk to the the Pratum guys that are outside. And I know there's uh, Observe IT is floating around, uh, and the Pro Circular guys are floating around, and I've seen uh, SecureWorks. Uh, one of them's going to talk today, so uh, just say thank you, uh, and a spe uh, and principal as well. Housekeeping. Uh, so the restrooms are just straight down the hall here. Uh, lounges. We can use all these lounges. There's one upstairs that we can use as well. So feel free to hang out. Uh, can they get to the CTF from the lounges too? In the room, okay. Uh, recording, so one uh, big question. All the talks are being recorded, as you can see. We have a B-Sides Iowa YouTube channel. They'll all be posted up there. Uh, Evan's awesome about it. We appreciate him coming up and helping us out. Um, he usually has them up by, like, Wednesday, uh, sometimes even before he leaves town, so he's really quick. Uh, we do have some free stuff to give away, some books, uh, and there'll be some CTF prizes, so if you compete the CTF, there's a chance for prizes. Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, if you really dare to get on it, there's the uh, <laughs> GB events and the go to GBU. Q4 is the uh, password. Uh, Twitter handle. So there's some confusion, right? We actually have two Twitter handles. Uh, so when I first took it over, we didn't have access to the at B-Sides Iowa, all spelled out Twitter handle. Uh, so we created at B-Sides IA. Uh, but over the last year, I was able to get Twitter to give me access to the other one. So we, we have it now. So if you can all move over to B-Sides Iowa, that's where we'll get it. Because I've been trying to track two and tweeting. People are tweeting this one, that one. So we're going to move everything over to B-Sides Iowa because it, it just makes more sense, I think. Uh, and the last thing is just... You know, we're here to have fun, we're here to learn a lot, and we're here to network. So, you know, be nice, damn it. <laughs> Lunch. Uh, we want to give a special shout out to uh, Principal Financial. Um, I, when, when we get uh, a company like Principal that comes in, you know, they, they don't sell a product, they don't sell a service, they're really just doing it to help out the community. Uh, and they, they put up uh, a fair bit of money to help put on the event and to pay for lunches. Uh, so we really want to thank them uh, for their support uh, uh, both last year and this year. After party, so there will be an after party at 515 Brewing. 
who's actually an InfoSec guy, right, that runs, that runs 515. So uh, we had one out there last year. So if you're in town, <laughs> or if you get snowed in, maybe, <laughs> come on down and we'll have some beers. Uh, and then uh, keep the party going all year. So, you know, we're big about community, and here in Iowa, we're blessed to have three groups uh, throughout the state that do this sort of thing on a monthly basis. So we've talked about SecDSM. SecIC is in Iowa City area, uh, and we are a chapter of SecDSM. I'm, I'm involved in that. Uh, and we have a monthly meetup. We get together, have drinks, pizza. And then there's Sec Midwest. Those guys are in the back, right over there. Uh, they are uh, up in Cedar Rapids. That's the True North building. They meet the second Tuesday, right, uh, of every month. Uh, so they, you know, same thing, beer, pizza, learn, hang out, right? So it's a good time. So the uh, point here is you don't have to just come here once a year, find one of these groups. Uh, SecDSM is the third Thursday of the month, and SecIC is the third Tuesday of the month. So find us, SecIC.org, SecDSM.org, and SecMidwest.org are the websites, right? And all the information's out there. Oh, yeah, Slack's everywhere. Slack to your heart's content. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, so uh, I mentioned Ken used to run this. Uh, there's a scholarship uh, in his name for um, the SANS Digital Forensics track. So if you're a student, uh, this is for you. So write it all down. Uh, this is a fantastic thing that they do. Uh, you, there's two SANS DFR classes, and if you haven't looked, they're like $6,200 a piece now um, that they provide to the scholarship winner. Um, they have entry to the DFIR Summit every year, and then you get coached by two fantastic individuals uh, to kind of help boost your career in a chance for an internship. There's the link up there. You don't have to try and write it down. If you just Google Sans Ken Johnson's uh, uh, scholarship, it'll show up. Um, and the deadline is May 18th. Uh, I think the only stipulation is you have to be a full-time student, if I remember right. So anyway, check that out because uh, it's a really fantastic thing they do for them. So we are a little behind. We'll, uh, we'll com we won't compress talks or anything. We'll probably try and make up some time uh, at lunch. Uh, we'll probably start right at one. Just depends where we finish. I think we'll be okay, though. And then uh, I gave a half hour for the closing ceremonies. It doesn't take that long, so we'll compress there. But we'll just keep things rolling from here on out. So stay tuned. Track one's in here. Track two is right next door. CTF room is down the hall. Uh, and in about five minutes, we'll get started with the talks. <laughs>